the 2005-2006 women's basketball team. The 2005-2006 year served as the first year that the then North Georgia College and State University would compete at the NCAA Division II level. North Georgia continued its winning ways from their time in NAIA and entered the Peach Belt Conference in a dominant fashion, going 23-4 on the season and earning the title of regular season champions to cap off their first season at the new level, which was the first Peach Belt Conference championship for North Georgia. North Georgia finished first in several statistical categories that season and set a Peach Belt Conference record for most consecutive wins. They led the conference at the end of the season in winning percentage, scoring offense, scoring margin, field goal percentage, and three-point field goal percentage. They finished second in the conference in rebounding, rebounding margin, free throw percentage, steals, and finished third in block shots and assists. Senior Associate Athletic Director Derek Serrani, who served as head athletic trainer at the time, stated, that group was as dedicated and tenacious as you could find in the country that year. It was truly a shame they couldn't compete in postseason because there's no doubt they would have made a run for the national championship. Along with being named the Peach Belt Conference regular season champions, Saritha Marble was named the Peach Belt Conference Freshman of the Year, while Coach Burson won Coach of the Year. Katie Williamson was named to the all-conference team. The team was led by a senior class of five student athletes who won a conference championship in every year they competed at North Georgia. Congratulations to the team. Congratulations to this amazing senior class from that year. And, um, you know, when I looked at all of the records that this group set, just absolutely amazing. But I think what, what is even more amazing is the, the transformation that went on that this team uh, brought the, the university through, the transition into an entirely new level of, of play and can't imagine the, the burden mentally that would have, would have come along with that. Coach Burson, I'll start with you and we will play past the microphone as, as, as we go through this, this session. Uh, the opening question to you, what was it like knowing that you had this high caliber a team to make that transition? It was tough because, you know, we didn't know if we were going to be able to compete for anything when we were making the transition from NAI to, to NCAA. So once we found out that we could at least play for the regular season championship, it changed everything because these guys were coming off um, a Sweet 16 and Elite 8 and then another Sweet 16. And so they were used to winning. So the fact that we could do that changed the, the whole world. It was still tough. We didn't know anything about the Peach Belt teams are good, bad, or indifferent. So the fact that, you know, we had to do our homework with all that. Um, but, you know, just, just again, knowing we can compete for something, I think, with as competitive a group as this was, um, was all we needed. Awesome. And, and we'll just pass the mic down the, uh, the row here and we'll, we'll circle around. But I'm always curious about the, the mindset of, of a student athlete uh, as you compete. And, and, and knowing that you're part of a phenomenal program, but making a jump, what was it like during that season? It was exhilarating. It actually was so exciting because it was my, I was a senior, but I actually um, play, just played one year of basketball because I played softball as well. And we even said at our table earlier, like we didn't know what we didn't know. And it was, it was nervous because we were like, okay, can we compete? Can we not compete? But then once we got the first couple of games under our belt and we were winning and we were clicking and she was so relentless on 
the fundamentals so relentless and then we understood that okay with persistence we can get this we can do well and then with consistency we're like we're gonna keep this going and, and we did um, as such a collective um, group yeah, I'm, I'm also curious about the the team chemistry and, and we'll uh, pass the mic uh, on down and um, obviously as uh, the seniors on that team high expectations for, for leadership collectively with everyone. Looking back, what was it like from a team chemistry standpoint in that transition year? Um, so I think I had the privilege to play here for four years in a row, and I think every team was different. And I have always looked back on that and, and really um, admired Coach for her ability to put together a team a championship level team with a bit of a different feel every single year that I played. Um, I can say going into our senior year, uh, Lara just said we didn't know what we didn't know, and I agree with that, but I also think they didn't know what they didn't know. Uh, yeah. They ranked us at the bottom of our uh, conference, and I, I had a, a, a feeling in my stomach when I saw that, like, that's fine, you can put us there, but we're not going to end there. Um, and I think every player on our team was on board with that. Um, and it started from really before the season, but the second we start dog week, which is our you know, intro into the season, uh, the team gets to start that tomorrow. Uh, midnight, midnight, midnight. <laughs> midnight tonight. All right, that dog week is the beginning of, of a journey for us. Um, we, she puts us through things. I, I can't halfway describe what we go through. You guys would think it was insane. Uh, but it makes the rest of the year easy. We know each other inside and out. We trust each other. Uh, Coach had a saying that it's, it's not personal, it's business. Um, and when we stepped on a basketball floor, that's, that's what it was. Uh, we were focused and down to business, and everybody bought into that mentality. Obviously, the, the business at hand, and I'll pass the mic back to her second row here. And Lindsay? Uh, I'm, I'm curious to follow up on that thought of sort of entering the season with, with the chip on the collective shoulder of that team, knowing what the expectation was with the, the folks that, that had the team ranked at the bottom uh, of your new league. What was it like for you entering a season with that to look at? I think that was, you know, we're, we're all very highly competitive, and that was a challenge that we were um, – pretty excited about. I think, you know, the underdog mentality started out for us that way with being picked last. Um, and it quickly changed to, I just was thinking about this today, that there was a point in the season where we just expected to win. Um, and, and not in a cocky way. It, it was, um, we knew what we had to do and uh, we were all bought in and we just, we, we knew that we were going to win if we, we did our best and we did it together. Um, so it, it was very special to see it go from picked last to uh, where we ended up. And, um, you know, I think our team chemistry played a huge part of that. Right. While you still have the mic, I want to ask a second question about, um, <laughs> yeah, du Two double questions, questions double well. questions. So the time that you spent here in this program uh, with, with Coach Burson and, and the, the teammates that you're with here tonight, what role did that play in forming a desire to continue in athletics from a coaching perspective. Talk about that. I think Hillary said it best. I just felt so fortunate to um, have a coach who poured into us all the time. And, and um, I, I always wanted to be around the game. I knew that. Um, and so having the opportunity to, to give back and to still be around it was something I felt um, very compelled to do. And I, and I also felt very blessed that I had the opportunity to do that. Thank you. Jenica, I've, I've got to ask, there have to be some, some Coach Burson stories <laughs> that, that we need to share that, that folks might not have, have had a chance to hear because I, I know that there's something that's just burning that we need to, to get out there. Anything that, that comes to mind that stands out above everything else? That's a difficult question. Um, <laughs> Coach Burson will always be Coach Burson, um, even 20 years 
of now being an adult and being a mom, she's still a coach person. Um, she still intimidates all of us. Um, she is, um, from a six foot one person, she is small and mighty, and she always will be. She had a way of earning our respect from day one where we always wanted to do our best for her, whether that was in the classroom, that was on the court, um, that was in our dorms in Owen Hall, whatever it was, we um, valued her opinion, we wanted her respect, and we wanted to give her the best when it was our turn to get out there on the field or the court, even if it was for one minute and that's all we had that game, or if it was 40 minutes, we were gonna give it our all because we um, will always respect Coach Burston and call her Buffy or not, she's just, uh, she's family to all of us. Uh, we have a text message thread with all of us. She's um, been, it, it was a joy to, to, to be able to play for her. Yeah, that is so special and, and not surprising in the least. Um, Janine, I'm, I'm curious about looking back at, at this uh, collective effort. There obviously had to be hiccups during the, the season. Are there any, any hurdles uh, for the team that you remember uh, getting over that really continued the success for this team? I think this year was um, kind of a lucky and blessed year in that I honestly don't remember a ton of hurdles. I think we took care of that in Doll Week. <laughs> I think we kind of ran it out of us. And, um, but we were all such good friends. I mean, we really just had such a great group of ladies together and that we're all friends now. I mean, we just got together a couple months ago for a weekend and it, we just moved through things so easily that the, if there was a hurdle there, we didn't even worry about it. We just went straight through it. Through it. So, <laughs> That's awesome. And, and, and I know that as we look back, and, and Coach, I'll uh, ask a couple of questions of you to, to wrap up our visit. Um, you shared a, a story that when we uh, had a chance to visit briefly before dinner about an early season game that didn't start out quite the way that that would have uh, been expected, uh, and the team was in a pretty good deficit at a certain point. Walk us through that particular game and then how things wound up. Yeah, well, they remember. They don't remember. There were too many hiccups. There were some hiccups <laughs> that season. There really there were, and um, one of them happened to come in the second game of the second conference game of the year, first road game. So we had just beaten our first Peach Belt team at home by I don't know eight or nine. It was Augusta. And then we hit the road to go to USC Aiken. And so it's halftime, and we look at the scoreboard, and we're down 18. And so I don't know what they remember at halftime. I know what I, I mean, I, know, I, I still remember the locker room. Um, I remember being my face red, extremely mad, um, just saying, okay, is this, this is what it's gonna be like. It's like, so we didn't know anything about them, but uh, this, if this is gonna be what's like, gonna be like, this is gonna be. Tough year, and uh, I don't know how we're going to get through this. Anyway, long story short, Street the Marble, shout out to you, who you saw was the freshman of the year and in the Hall of Fame, had a breakout second half. And, of course, these guys picked their game up too. And um, we ended up winning the game by 10, but we were down 18 at halftime, and I thought, what have we got ourselves into? So there were a lot of hiccups along the way, but needless to say, they <laughs> ran the table after that game, but that was uh, – that was a, interesting. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Very By the way, Katie said she definitely remembered halftime. So, yeah. Um, one thing, too, that um, we, we, we made mention of uh, in, in the conversation that I think is uh, a common thread in the success of your programs, um, both this uh, team that's being honored with induction, but Dog Week. And um, in relation to that, uh, the team is honoring um, an inductee in memoriam. Colonel Billy Shaw, and a uh, gentleman that was behind uh, the Dog Week uh, Special Forces events that began in the year 2000. Coach, if you would share the importance of that honor. Sure, and I want to thank his brother, Glenn Shaw, and Kristen, his wife, are here tonight, so we, we thank you all. Um, yes, Colonel Shaw came to, knew we did Dog Week, but it was totally different. We did basketball conditioning weights and stuff until he came and talked to me about Hey, I got this idea about incorporating the Beast event. So he did. The, he we started it with him, um, threw all the basketball stuff out, and it turned into what it is today. Um, 
but just Colonel Shaw himself was bigger than life. Like all the, the not just um, the events that he put on, but just how he interacted with our players and, and quiet professionals, humble but lethal, um, you know, nothing personal, just business. She gave me credit for that, but that was stuff that came from Colonel Shaw, and he taught me so much life lessons, and, and I was so thankful that he could be around our team, and not just, like I said, for the dog week, but just for reasons like that, and he sat on our bench this season, um, that whole entire season, and I, I just remember, we were talking at the table, I, I just remember him always just saying one thing, not that he didn't know anything about basketball, but he was always just yelling, get the ball. Like, that was just his thing, like, get the ball. Like, it was that simple with Colonel Shaw, and that's just kind of how it was with Dog Week, too. Like, we're going to do this, we're going to get in and get better. So um, we, we're blessed that his family, like I said, are here with us tonight, and um, he's just such a huge part of the tradition and culture at North Georgia. So I appreciate y'all helping us honor him. Absolutely, and thank you for, for sharing that. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2005-2006 women's basketball team. <laughs>